morning, guys. Well, on my way to my first service call. Uh, really nice morning here in Indiana. It's about 8 o'clock, about 74 degrees. Corn's getting tall. So, <clears throat> I've been thinking about um, doing a, a video on water source geothermals. And, yeah, I've been tossing around my head how to do it and what I want the video to be about. Well, today must have been uh, the day for it because I got three calls for all on water source geos and the nice thing is um, I know one's a split system uh, water source uh, I have a couple water furnaces and the other one I'm not sure about it might be a climate master or something like that I'm not sure but um, so anyhow we're coming up on the first place here and um, can get some video of it and Hopefully we can go through some uh, geothermals today and and uh, come up with something good. So see you soon. All right, guys. Um, this is the first service call I was talking about of water furnace Envisions. Envisions are kind of their top of the line. This is the brand I sell. Water furnace are made here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, and these guys have even actually custom built um, geos for me, like putting the return on the other side or just doing different strange things for us, which is kind of unheard of in the residential market anymore. But so what we got is three ton for the downstairs, um, and we got a five ton that does the upstairs. Um, basically you got your water in your water out um, this is my drains to my water out which is what the problem was they have water out from the first unit water out from the 5 ton unit and they had their condensate drain tied in down here well both of these one at a time Fine, no problem. Both of them come on. You can see look at that water's been running across the floor. This has been doing it since they put it in a few years back. What they had was you know, they, they piped this in for a humidifier. They put a T with threads on here and they had the nipple is sticking up and this one never got a humidifier like the other one did okay so both units come on and back up the condensate line shoot water up out of here all over the floor they, they said that the installing contractor um he's cleaned that condensate drain he kept thinking the condensate drain was backing up the very first thing i looked at was all the rust and thought no, that doesn't come from condensate. So, what we did, I took the condensate off of this. Because um, when both of these are running at the same time, we're running, um, I think it's 12 gallons a minute. No, it's 11, 11 gallons a minute when both of them are on. Down a two inch drain. And that's a lot of pressure up above that three-quarter and it was just backing all the way up that and just blowing out there so I took it off here capped it stuck the condensate pump in um, ran my tubing up over across I'm not done I need to go out and get a couple staples right there and there and there's an existing condensate pump that's what that darker line right here is for the RO system, so I put a T 
You took them both into there, into that trap, blah, 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 okay? So, here's the other pump. Right there for the reverse, reverse osmosis system. So, on to Manticagi. On demand well pump. Somebody did a nice job with their with the tax layout. The thing I'm concerned about is look at this. When that geo's running, it's fluctuating really bad. And what I've done, usually if you get that problem. You got a solenoid valve here on both of them. It's on your wa your water source out. It's tied to your contactor. It's a 24 volt. And usually that's the issue. Maybe they get dirty, rust in them, whatever. Well, I opened up both of them and I've cleaned them both out. And it's still bouncing like that. So I'm not sure. I'm gonna. Um, another thing I need to do. I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do it today. I'm gonna come back and service these. Uh, this is the first time I've worked on these, so, and the way I clean the water coil, which I'm glad whoever piped this in did it the way I like it, um, this is my water in, so I could shut that off, I could shut my water out off, I got a boiler drain here, a boiler drain here, and I run ice machine cleaner, about 50-50, um, just with a little pump, I set up a bucket, I pump into one side, and back into my bucket through the other side. And I'll run it that way for about 20-30 minutes, and then I'll reverse it and run the water back the other way. Then I run clean water for about 15 minutes afterwards just to flush it all out. And that usually gets all the scale and junk out of it, and it works really well. So, I need to pick up some cleaner, and come back, and... Um, I'm going to do that. Too. Now this is what we call a pump and dump, meaning he's pumping straight out as well. And where this is dumping to, it is going, I don't know if I need to get back there. I don't know if you can see out there. There's a pond out there, so it's just going straight out and dumping in the pond. So, open loop, pump and dump, there's a few different terms for it, but that's the idea. Rather than a ground loop, which is where you have all the tubes buried in the ground and you have a like, golf field system. Now this thing over here, I was checking it out, seeing how good it's doing. It is doing amazing. I have 54 entering water. 15 degree temperature rise on my water. That's just, that's great. The thing is pounding it out. It's putting, I think the temperature was 48 degree air coming out, so. Okay, well, on to the next one. I'll see you soon.